everyone and welcome to Bolton Methodist Church to worship with us this morning as a circuit as we celebrate our harvest. This year things are very different aren't they and we're all missing being able to come together and decorate our churches with wonderful goods, uh, fruit, vegetables, flowers, all the lovely things that harvest brings us but we're not able to do that this year are we? Traditionally, in Boulderton, um, our congregation would come together a few days before the um, Harvest Festival service, and we'd, some of us would select a window, and some of us would se select an area in the church that we'd like to um, decorate. Last year, our Messy Church family decided to decorate the, the front hall, and we had great fun making scarecrows. And uh, it was very messy because um, we'd got a lot of straw all over the floor, but it was really, really good fun. We also made a lovely collage with um, dried autumn leaves and we got conkers and, um, and acorns and pine cones and we did a really beautiful display and it was fantastic. And as I thought about last year, I looked in my messy church box this morning and I found three paper plate sunflowers. They hadn't been taken home by some of our youngsters, but they were also part of the display. Sadly, this year, we haven't been able to meet for Messy Church, a time when we get together, make crafts and have fun, but we have kept in touch. Recently, we asked our families to think about harvest and to share their thoughts and drawings. We talked about falling leaves, ploughing the fields, fresh vegetables and sunflowers. We also talked about the opportunity to bring gifts to the church gifts that will be distributed to people in need. We talked about how the weather will change and the need for warmer clothes. Nobody mentioned Goose Fair, but I did. Some of the children have produced drawings and we've put together this little slideshow for you all to enjoy. Shall we worship God together as we sing that lovely hymn, All Things Bright and Beautiful.
you, Cathy, for that introduction. Shall we pray? Lord, you are creator God, and we thank you for the world we live in. Lord, we are grateful for your abundance in the food that you provide, in the way you sustain us spiritually, and the rich experiences of life we encounter every day. We marvel at the way you give us such variety in your provisions. You are a God who is always creating something new for us to discover, to taste, to see, to hear, to experience. We thank you that you reveal yourself to us in so many different ways. We thank you for the people who use their skills to provide for our needs, especially the food we eat and the water we drink. We do not always realise how basic these needs are, and yet we acknowledge that many people around the world do not have easy access to them. We thank you, Lord, for all your provision to us. Amen. And now, shall we say the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now I will ask Anne to read from Matthew chapter 6. The reading is from Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 34. Therefore, I bid you put away anxious thoughts about food and drink to keep you alive, and clothes to cover your body. Surely life is more than food, the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow, reap and store in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. You are worth more than the birds. Is there a man of you who by anxious thought can add a foot to his height? And why be anxious about clothes? Consider how the lilies grow in the fields. They do not work, they do not spin, and yet I tell you, even Solomon, in all his splendour, was not attired like one of these. But if that is how God clothes the grass in the fields, which is there today and tomorrow is thrown on the stove, will he not all the more clothe you? How little faith you have. No, do not ask anxiously, what are we to eat? What are we to drink? What shall we wear? All these are things for the heathen to run after, not for you, because your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. Set your mind on God's kingdom and his justice before anything else, and all the rest will come to you as well. So do not be anxious about tomorrow. Tomorrow will look after itself. Each day has troubles enough of its own. Amen. Thank you, Anne. And so we sing our next hymn, which is For the Beauty of the Earth. <laughs>
his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. For the joy of human love, brother, sister, parent, child, friends on earth and friends above, for all generations. can be detached from our origins of food. Most of us these days know where the food comes from because we perhaps visited farms or watched documentaries. But in the same way, some people are ignorant about God. They don't feel God has any part to play in their life. And yet, of course, we know he does because he provides all that we need. And in a sense, there is expectancy in our lives because we expect food to be on the table. We expect food to be available because if we haven't got what we want in the house, then we can always go to the local shops. It was different in Jesus' day. There wasn't the availability of the food that we have today. It was dependent on people perhaps growing their own vegetables or farmers growing food and taking it to the marketplace so that people could buy food there. But it was perhaps even harder for the disciples. Jesus says to them, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink. Jesus was asking his disciples to trust God, his Father, for everything. It's a challenge for the disciples because they had to move from place to place and they didn't always know where their next meal came from because they were dependent on people being generous and giving them food and sometimes shelter. The challenge is the same for us. Although we fortunately have a freezer, a fridge full of food, and so we do know where our next meal is coming from. But of course, the challenge for us is deeper. The challenge is that we give our lives to God, that we are dependent on what God gives us. But even more than that, that we trust God with our very life that whatever happens to us, we still believe in God, we allow God to have control of our life. And I think if we have that trust in God, we find contentment. And so Jesus says to his disciples, he uses the illustrations of the birds in the air. The birds of the air, they do not sow or reap, 
or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. We see more in control of our circumstances than perhaps the disciples did, and yet are we more content? Contentment leads to appreciation. If we can appreciate what we already have, will we want more? Again, Jesus says, and why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was not dressed like one of these. Perhaps we need to spend more time in our relationship with God than we do in going round and buying clothes that perhaps make us look good on the outside, but don't necessarily change us on the inside. Sometimes when I ask God for something, then I'm amazed at what God gives me beyond my imagination. God does not scrimp when he is handing out his provisions. If we think about parents giving gifts to children, then do they think to themselves, well, what's the minimum I can give my child for them to be happy? If it's a child's birthday, then they will shower them with presents because they want to show that they love them. I think if we want to receive from God, we need to be in the right place. We need to receive this shower of blessing. And what's that right place? Well, it's not necessarily in a church like we're in today. And it's not necessarily being perfect or a saint to receive from God. I think our attitude is important and our trust in God. We need to be ready and expectant to receive from God. If we think of a child being taken to a toy shop, then gradually as that child gets nearer the toy shop, then they will get excited. And as they go in the door, then they'll look around at the toys they might get, but they know that before they leave that toy shop, then they'll receive a toy. And it's the same if you take a child to a sweet shop. As they go into that sweet shop, as they enter in, they probably know exactly what sweets they want and they'll ask their parents for that sweet. And so they know again that before they come out of that sweet shop, they'll have some sweets in their hands. The expectancy is there. Do we have the same expectancy when we come before God and ask him for something? Do we expect to receive? Do we hold our hands out expectantly? Perhaps we just cup our hands like this and just think we're going to receive a little. And I'll just ask Kathy to pour some sweets into my hand. So you see, I've got a few sweets, but not all that many compared to all the sweets that were poured out in front of me. But if we're expectant, then we have open hearts, open minds, and open hands to receive. And I'll just get the container. So we have a container here. God is gonna bless us, so Kathy's gonna come up forward She's going to pour the sweets out again. So we can receive from God a lot more because there's expectancy in our hearts. I think the other thing is God wants to bless us personally. I think sometimes we just think God's going to bless us so we can bless other people. We can, he can bless his church through us. 
and and we just feel his blessing is for other people but sometimes god gives us a blessing and that's a wonderful thing because it's for us it's a confirmation that god loves us and god knows how precious we are so we thank god for those personal times we thank god today for all he gives to us and because this is a harvest celebration we think of the practical ways the physical provisions that he gives us we thank god for those things but also we thank god for the farmers those who work on the land those who drive the lorries to bring the food to the shops so we can buy them so our hearts are thankful today because god provides for us amen now let us pray we must change our ways the world is suffering because of our excesses the air pollution the plastic which is an ever-present reminder of our throwaway society help us lord to mean business when we say we want to tackle climate change raise up men and women and children to lead the way to have the focus of returning this planet to a sustainable resource not just for our lifetime but for generations and generations to come let us leave a legacy to those who follow us that we can be proud of at the moment we are ashamed of the piles of rubbish that we contribute to each week we ask forgiveness for the missed opportunities to make a difference and we pray for a better world for the future amen and now we sing our closing hymn we plow the fields and scatter
And now, shall we say the grace together? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining with us today and we do pray you will keep safe and God bless. Goodbye.